Welcome to the Janus Project. Uh, starting a new series here on Islam, and I'm um, working through some of these notes for an apologetics class that I teach. And I just wanted to go through some basics. Um, maybe later I'll, I'll show you some film footage of, there's a collection of works that I have called the Hadith, and uh, you'll, you'll see some of that show up in this class. And uh, so really, basically, what I wanted to do at the start of this is I just wanted to cover some of the basics of Islam. Now, Islam is a... An Abrahamic faith, that means it, it, it attempts to trace its roots back to Abraham. Um, Christianity and Judaism are the other two that do this. Now, obviously, there's various sects of, uh, of, of all of those. Um, and, and the point is, though, they do try to trace their, their history back to Abraham. Now, Islam does come around about 600 years after the, the birth of Christianity. So Christianity has spread all throughout the Roman Empire and, and that, that world around it. And so Christianity is going to be a major influence on the rise of Islam. Um, in fact, um, Muhammad's wife supposedly was a Christian. And uh, so I just want to kind of go through some of this. Now, some of the dates are going to shift depending on what uh, accounting you have. And so let me just start off. Uh, AD 610, Muhammad begins to receive revelation. Um, this is something that you will see. Um, so, uh, Muhammad, he begins to receive divine revelation from Gabriel. Uh, this is in December 22nd of 609. Um, that's just kind of the basics. Uh, there's a lot to say about that. We'll get into it. But uh, the long and short of it is he is told by the angel to read. He says he can't. He gets squeezed by the angel and then told to read again. He says he can't. He gets squeezed again. Uh, this happens multiple times. Uh, you then hop to 618 AD. Uh, he flees to Medina, which at the time was known as Yathrib. And uh, that, that's, so he's fleeing Mecca because of persecution. And uh, so he flees to Medina, spends a little bit of time uh, pillaging caravans and doing things like that. Uh, kind of a, a typical uh, Arab behavior for the time. So it's nothing unbelievably shocking, but, but that's what he does. Uh, he then returns to Mecca in 629 AD. And uh, that's where he more or less takes over as far as uh, authority and control. And uh, this is where you're going to see a lot of the the teachings in the Quran shift to more of a uh, we're going to fight the unbeliever. Whereas when he was in Medina and and early on in Mecca, he was more of the living in peace. So so you're going to see this this shift uh, as you go throughout the Quran, uh, where there are going to be times where he pleads for peace. There are there are going to be times where he pleads for more of a, a warfare type mentality. Um, but there is there is a different uh, perspective on some of those. Uh, he will die in, in 632. Um, by some accounts, uh, he was poisoned. So he captured this this one uh, Jewish woman. Uh, he, I believe, killed her husband as part of the, the capturing and all that. And uh, for some reason, he saw fit to eat a meal that she prepared for her, for him. Uh, and uh, the, the sheep, uh, supposedly, according to tradition, cried out and said, Oh, prophet, you know, I'm poisoned. Don't eat me. Uh, he had already done so. And so he... He kind of suffered a pretty painful death, uh, so I think he lingered for about two years before he finally died. One of his companions did die of the poison, um, so we, we say most likely he died of, of poisoned lamb. Um, and again, there are very few sources, um, at least that exist, um, but one of the ones that we know is from what's called Al-Tabri. Now, Al-Tabri, uh, he dies in 923 AD, so that kind of puts it in a, an interesting perspective for all that. Uh, if you want to see a whole video on how did Muhammad die, I, I direct you over to Acts 27 Apologetics. Uh, they have a whole video called How Did Muhammad Die, but I'll let you look that one up on your own. Now, as you are studying Islam, just one of the things you want to note is that uh, chrono chronologically, uh, the early chapters of the Quran, not by their place in the Quran, but by their, um, their, their time when they were written, chronologically early chapters are called the Meccan. All right, and uh, so there, there's the Meccan uh, surah or surat. Um, and so what those are is those are the chapters of the Quran that he wrote while he was still in Mecca, kind of getting ready. Uh, he is then exiled from uh, Mecca, like I told you. That's called the Hijra. And uh, that that is a very important time. Um, he will spend a bit of time, um, you know, living in Medina and other things like that. And then post-Hijra, uh, the, the sections of the Quran that are revealed are called Medinan because that's where the Muslims were living. Um, now they would eventually move back into Mecca, but we split those up into Meccan and Medinan. Now, 
Uh, just if you're trying to find your way through the Quran, just remember the Quran is arranged uh, in size order, not chronological order. So that really confused me when I was first studying out the Quran, because as they started talking about, you know, the first surah, and it's way toward the back of the Quran, that made no sense to me. But as you understand that the Quran is actually made up of a ton of different surah, which are chapters, and all of these are arranged in order of size, not chronological order, then it, then it starts to make sense. Uh, the, Me the Meccan ones do tend to be shorter, uh, both in size and uh, verse, not verse length, um, and the Quran ones are arranged, um, the, the Medinan ones tend to be longer. Um, now these, since they are arranged from longest to shortest, the Meccan, so the chronologically early ones, actually end up showing up later on in the Quran. So just, just something to keep in mind uh, as you're studying out Islam. Um, there's a lot of false things that are thrown about. There's a lot of criticisms that are thrown about. And uh, what I'm trying to do is kind of set the record straight. I know a lot of Christians have tried to do this as well, and there's a lot of Muslims who have tried to do this. Um, but if we're going to criticize a religion, we should at least know what that religion teaches. Now, some things to note. Like I said, the Quran is not arranged chronologically. It's arranged by length. Um, now, there is some debate on when, are the, when some of these Quran uh, chapters, the surahs, uh, are written. Uh, what we can do is we can compare it with the life of Muhammad. There's a collection of writings about the life of a Muhammad called the Hadith. Um, and so the Hadith will help us identify some of these, uh, but others have to be deciphered through their content or uh, how they're talking or, or whether they're peaceful or, or, or things like that. There are certain context clues that are going to help us identify where exactly uh, these, these fall. Now, as we uh, deal with this, there are a few characteristics of the Meccan surahs that you uh, you want to know. All right, so uh, any chapter that contains a verse commanding prostration to Allah is probably going to be a Meccan surah. Um, if it talks about Adam and Satan, um, uh, who's also known as Iblis in, in Islam, um, except for chapter 2. Uh, emph emphasis on belief in Allah, judgment, etc. So, so you can almost see the Meccan surahs as being things that are Kind of lay in the groundwork of the faith because they are the early ones. So, so when Muhammad comes, you know, out of that cave after talking to Gabriel, uh, he's going to have to start teaching this new religion. And so, you're going to see a lot of this type of stuff kind of laid down um, about that. Uh, if it's arguing with polytheists, because most of the people in Mecca at the time were polytheists, and so he's arguing with them, basically saying there is no partners. Allah has no partners. Allah has no uh, consort, he has no children. This is this is going to be directly where it interacts with Christianity, because what it's going to do is it's going to say, say not three. Now, it is trying to reference the Trinity, but it, it uses the Arabic word for three, and says, say not three, because there was this idea that instead of a Trinity, Christians worship three gods. Uh, but then later on, as you continue to listen, uh, it talks about, you know, Allah doesn't need to have a son through a a consort he can just say be and 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 it will be and uh so there was almost this idea apparently that mary was a god along with allah and then their son jesus was also a god and so that would be the trinity um misunderstanding there but that seems to be what the uh the surahs are laying out uh some other characteristics of the meccan surah um there is a a, a different order uh so we, we think this is the order, at least uh, one of the ideas of the order that the surah go in. So you start off with sixty uh, with 96. Um, that's typically the first one. That's why it confused me on first study, because that's actually the earliest surah, but it's found way, way back uh, toward the back of the Quran. Um, but it starts off with 96. Um, some people then say it goes to 68, 73, 74, 1, 111, 81, 87, 92, 89, etc. Et uh, others say it goes a different order. Um, but we, we don't know for sure. Again, we, we have to piece this together by what they're talking about. We piece this together based on what the Hadith have to say. Uh, and, and obviously there's some disagreement with even which uh, Hadith uh, are accepted. Now, uh, the Surat are then divided into the first, which is the start of the ministry, and the second. Um, and then the third, which is the beginning of the public ministry to the Hijra. And so the Meccan Surah have just a, there's a whole lot to this. Um, but you need to understand the Quran if you're going to understand Islam. And to understand the Quran, you need to understand what was going on culturally. And so that's what we've got here with the Meccan Surah. And uh, so I, I think I've recorded enough for this first video to kind of give you an idea of what Islam is about, at least basically. 
uh, where it came from and, and where the religious texts come from. Now we are going to get into some of the doctrines and some of the disagreements as you move further along, uh, but this is just this is just episode one. So bear with me, and uh, we will continue to learn more and more uh, about Islam through these surah.